Rickard Karstark's execution by Rob Stark is a tender subject for some. There are varying reactions to it. It was honorable but dumb, terrible tactical decision, he had to, and so on. Today, let's examine Rickard Karstark's execution and why it may or may not have been a good idea. How did his execution come about? Well, Rickard Karstark's two children, Torin and Eddart, are killed during the Battle of the Whispering Wood by Jaime Lannister. Jaime Lannister is then captured during this battle and held as a hostage. This upsets Rickard Karstark as he wants vengeance for his two sons' death. However, he realizes that Jaime Lannister is a valuable hostage, so he, for the moment, lets it go. But this all changes when he returns from the Westerlands with his army and discovers Catelyn Stark had let Jaime Lannister go in hopes of recovering her two daughters, Arya and Sansa. This enrages Rickard, who feels he has been denied his vengeance. This leads him to taking seven of his own men and murdering the captive squires Chin Frey and Willem Lannister, in the process killing two Tully men as well. On top of this, Rickard sends his cavalry out into the Riverlands, telling them that the person that brings him Jamie's head will have his daughter Alice's hand in marriage. As a result of these actions, Robb Stark declares what Lord Karstark did was treason and executes him. Was this a smart move on Robb Stark's part? First, let's look at this from both Lord Rickard Karstark and Robb Stark's point of view. When the men that killed or helped kill the squires are marched in before Rob, and Rob is told of the two Tully men that were slain while they murdered the Frey and Lannister, Car Stark responds, It was no murder, sir. Any man who steps between a father and his vengeance asks for death. Rob counters, I saw your sons die that night in the Whispering Wood. Chan Frey did not kill Torin. Willem Lannister did not slay Eddard. How then can you call this vengeance? This was folly and bloody murder. Your sons died honorably on the battlefield, with swords in their hands. Karstark spits back, they died. The King Slayer cut them down. These two were of his ilk. Only blood can pay for blood. Rob goes on to question him about the blood of children paying for his kid's life, and Karstark tells him squires die in every battle, to which Rob responds, Die fighting, yes. Chin Frey and Willem Lannister gave up their swords in the Whispering Wood. They were captives, locked in a cell, asleep, unarmed boys. During this argument, Karstark throws out that the squire's death was also on Catelyn Stark, and he asks, how can it be treason to kill Lannisters when it is not treason to free them? Minutes after this argument, we see another one between Rob Stark and his uncle Edmure Tully. Rob tells Edmure and Brendan Tully that Lord Rickard defied him, betrayed him, and he has no choice but to condemn him. Rob also reveals that Lord Karstark's son and heir, Harrion, will become his enemy, and that he could never openly forgive his father's killer. His own men would turn on him. He clarifies, These are Northmen, uncle. The North remembers. Hearing this, Edmure tells Rob to pardon Lord Karstark, to which Rob stares at him with frank disbelief. After much discussion on how executing Lord Karstark will hurt Rob and his cause, he states, Lord Rickard dies. I know what I said, uncle. It does not change what I must do. In battle, I might have slain Xian or Willem myself, but this was no battle. They were asleep in their beds, naked and unarmed, in a cell where I put them. Rickard Karstark killed more than a Frey and a Lannister. He killed my honor. I shall deal with him at dawn. So we see that Rob feels he must kill Rickard Karstark for honor and culture's sake, and that Lord Rickard Karstark feels he was owed vengeance for his son's death. But were both men justified in their thought process and decisions? Starting with Lord Stark, was Rob right in his decision to execute Rickard? The answer to that lies in this question. Why was it important for Rob Stark to execute Lord Karstark in the first place? We read over and over that the North remembers. They are very honor-bound. When Lord Karstark forsaked his honor and killed two defenseless boys, he went against Northern honor. That can't go unpunished. As well, Lord Karstark would have undermined Rob's authority and power if allowed to go unpunished. If you allow your bannermen to defy you and do as they please, you open yourself up to a million treasons. You are showing your men that the power lies with the bannermen, not their king. This could have opened up numerous complications for Rob. Rob knows he needs to uphold honor and the ways of the North. We have heard that a man that refuses to seek justice for himself risks his own men leaving him. This is a big part of Northern culture. Had the Northern Lords been taken out of the equation and replaced with Southern Lords, this wouldn't have played as big of a role. 
Even Edmure Tully doesn't understand why they just can't keep Rickard as a hostage. He doesn't understand how much Northern culture and expectation influence Rob and his Northern men. And Rob is very aware of how important seeking justice in this matter is. And when Catelyn says your lords made you their king, suggesting he shouldn't be bound by their expectations, he responds, and can on make me just as easy. Of course, there are some that believe Rob Stark never truly had a firm control over his men in the first place. If Rob had let Lord Karstark go unpunished, at one point it would have hurt Rob and lost him even more men. Rob had not only the moral, but strategic reasons to execute Lord Karstark. Though yes, he lost the Karstark supporting him in the future, it is incredibly likely he would have lost so much more. Rob also feels he owes the family of the boys justice. That is given by executing Lord Karstark, who killed the boys in a way that is viewed as dishonorable. Why else did Rob want to execute Lord Karstark? What are some other potential consequences that Rob may have looked at for what Lord Karstark did? 1. Killing prisoners of war endangers every other northerner or riverland prisoner of war. He put Rob in a terrible position where if he hadn't severely punished or executed Lord Karstark, it may have made it look like Rob Stark approved of the killing of captives. If that is believed, there's a higher chance that the other side will simply execute Northmen and Rivermen that are taken prisoner, or one or two of them to send a message back, especially since the squires he killed were males with strong connections to Tywin Lannister. However, Tywin would then be put in a position to weigh if killing those northern hostages was worth any further captives being harmed by the North. Would he really execute the rest of the northern hostages or even a few in reprisal for two squires being killed and then worry about Rob killing any other captured enemy? Or would he keep his hostages alive and hope Rob could be reasoned with and won't go on a further killing spree if he thinks Rob approved of what Lord Karstark did? Would Tywin execute a few hostages and wait for Rob's response? Of course, it is a little interesting when you think Rob executed Lord Karstark partly out of respect for Tywin and the families of the boys. Then Tywin showed Rob similar respect by orchestrating the Red Wedding, right? Second, his killing of the squires endangered Sansa Stark. Obviously, Rickard doesn't care about that, but Catelyn released Jaime Lannister. It is done. Not only killing the squires, but having Jaime hunted down and killed could have severely compromised Sansa's safety. Lastly, Rob also had the high moral ground especially in comparison to Tywin Lannister and his actions during the War of the Five Kings. If it got out that he was now dishonorably killing prisoners, that looks bad on his campaign and might have done some damage. So it seems that Robb Stark was forced in a way into executing Lord Karstark, at least with the options he saw. But readers have the ability to see the whole picture and just not what Robb Stark would have been afraid of had he not punished or executed Lord Karstark. Had Robb known what we know, he may have chosen a bit differently. Now, was Lord Karstark right in what he did? He said he was owed vengeance for his sons being killed in the battle by Jaime Lannister. But his boys were men and chose to fight in that battle and died with swords in their hands. They chose to put themselves between Jaime Lannister and Robb Stark. They chose to face Jaime Lannister in battle and defend their king. Jaime wasn't seeking them out. A few characters even mentioned how they had honorable deaths and there was nothing dishonorable in what Jaime Lannister did. Catelyn says, Your men did what they were sworn to do, Rob. They died protecting their liege lord. Jaime Lannister also says something similar to Catelyn. If truth be told, it was your son that I was trying to slay. The others got in my way. I killed them in a fair fight, in the heat of battle. Any other knight would have done the same. The Karstark boys were killed fairly, or as fair as war is, in battle. Rickard Stark didn't have any right to kill those squires based on vengeance, so from that standpoint, Lord Karstark was wrong in killing the boys. He also went against his king's wishes and killed his captives, and then sent his own men to retrieve Jaime Lannister when Robb Stark allowed for what Catelyn did to remain. This is straight treason, and Lord Karstark did not have the authority to kill those boys or send his men to retrieve Jaime. So yes, by the traditions and expectations of the North, Lord Karstark was wrong in his actions, though he probably didn't view it as wrong from a father's standpoint. A question I hear a lot is, could Rob have dealt with Jaime Lannister being freed and planned the aftermath of the execution better? Perhaps. Rob Stark may have poked the bear a bit after Catelyn freed Jaime Lannister. The reasoning Rob gives for excusing Catelyn's treason is a bit BS, even if he is trying to butter her up for his whole whoopsie marriage reveal. Are Rickard's actions that wrong when compared to what Catelyn Stark did and how she was excused? Catelyn frees Jaime Lannister, which is treason. However, Rob declares what she did, she did for love, out of grief for her children, 
Love's not always wise. It can lead us to great folly, but we follow our hearts wherever they take us. Okay, Catelyn did it out of love for her daughters and is excused to treason with no punishment thrown at her for the men to see, specifically Lord Karstark. And think about that from his perspective. We know how hard the death of two of his three boys is hitting him. His love for them and grief in losing them makes him look like a man in a nightmare. He has stopped grooming himself and he appears gaunt and hollow-eyed with grief. He feels very strongly for killing Lannisters and is appalled any time peace with them is brought up. Didn't Rickard Karstark murder the squires out of love for his children and the grief over their death? Wasn't that just the folly of love, following your heart? How can Rob forgive one treason because it was done for the love of their children and not another? It is no wonder Rickard storms out of the hall after hearing this and see no punishment thrown at Catelyn. Of course, you can always debate that what Karstark did was out of hate where Catelyn did it out of love, but that goes down to personal opinion. I did once read a beautiful verbal stab by someone about that. They wrote they wished Lord Karstark, as he was about to be executed, looked up at Rob and said, My only regret is not being closely related to you enough so that I could commit treason and go unpunished. Though to be fair, if Rob had executed his mother, Ned's widow, or given her a harsh punishment, the Northern Lords may not have responded to that very kindly. And obviously her punishment would not be as severe as Lord Karstark, but that buttering her up was more important. It's unknown how others would have reacted to a lesser punishment for Catelyn, but we do know some of the Northerners were not happy with what Catelyn did or her lack of punishment. Lastly, could Rob have picked another option than execution for Lord Karstark? Perhaps holding Lord Karstark as a hostage or sending him to the wall? The hostage tactic may have made Rob appear weak before his men. The wall option may have worked had the North been secure and Rob had the men to spare that he trusted to escort Rickard to the wall. As well, Rickard would have had to ask himself to take the black. Rob doing so may go back to the whole him appearing weak dilemma, looking for alternatives and trying to get out of the dirty work of executing a traitor. At the end of the day, there is still a lot of disagreement on whether Rob should have executed Lord Karstark or not. It is pretty clear killing the squires was not something owed to Lord Karstark, but killing Karstark lost Rob a lot. However, how much more would he have lost had he not executed the man and instead faced the Northerners who do not forget and do not take kindly to lords that don't seek justice and what is right? How weak would he have appeared and how much respect and authority would he have lost? Do you think Rob should have kept Lord Karstark as a hostage? Do you think if the Karstark men were left in Rob's army under those circumstances, he risked them undermining him and turning on him anyways? Do you think sending him to the wall was a viable option? Or do you think Rob was justified in executing Lord Karstark? Which option would have you picked for Rickard Karstark? Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button as it greatly helps the channel. Come back for Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire videos every Sunday and Wednesday.